in here, I've built the binary, I can run it, um, and it ultimately trips over with an error. Um, so we've got our live recorder tool, and if I just run that with the binary, what this is going to do is it's going to generate the recording of the failure. In this instance, the failure is 100% deterministic and repeatable, so that's really great and wonderful. Um, if it weren't, then there'd be ways we could run that repeatedly or even use the thread fussing feature that I think we may have talked about uh, before to help sort of highlight and, and capture these sort of rare conditions. But we can see here, basically, um, we've got ourselves uh, the recording, and if I do an LS at this point, we have the recording file here. So with that there, I can do gel, gel, uh, replay um, and then the recording file. So replay automatically is going to use our back end. Um, for other things like exec or debug, you need to use minus minus back end equals undo. But in this instance, it, it's automatically going to pick it up. So what this is doing is loading that recording in Delve and I'm ready to go. Um, let's see, it, it's basically set up and going. So if I put a break at main dot main, and continue. Well, run in our code. We're in our recording. Um, what I can do is I can see that main is a little bit longer than this. If I do a list like 67, that's going to show us some more lines. And we can see the error message that we saw at the console. If I scroll up a bit, you can see we got, you know, uh, we've had the output number scrote cache and um, that's the message that we see here coming out of line 69 if we let the os exit actually execute then that exits the recording and stops replay that's something involved so what i'm going to do is i'll just put a break on line 71 and that means if we get to 71 the os exit we can stop there and go backwards so now if i continue again we're at that point so we can see the same output we saw on the console and we can see we've hit this error um so have a look at the locals um much as we we're expecting to see uh i five five eight i mean everything we said at the command line uh, the content output is there number is 255 we're looking for square roots so the cache version we got is zero the correct answer is obviously 15. this is integer arithmetic so um square root is 255 is 15. um so we we've got our our sort of source of our problem so we want to start looking at what's going on so we can use rev next and this will allow me to step backwards in my code so if i do that once you can see we've now gone back up to line 69 if i do it again so i'm going to 68 and then back to 66 obviously this is going code line so blank lines aren't being counted um and right now i'm at line 66 just after the square root cache the value that's incorrect i'll just just confirm Square root cache is zero. That's the one that's incorrect. So we want to go and see what that is. But what I'm going to do is step backwards into that rather than um, going back and then going in forwards, just because it often is helpful to come in to see where return values happen. If you've got multiple returns in a function, going backwards into it takes you to the right part of the code. So we've stepped in here. And basically what we've got is we've got an array. We've got this cache array of square roots and values. And if I print um, cache i at this point we can see we've got this array with data and um, the number we've got is 255 and 0 so we've actually got bad data in our in our storage on our heap this is not good um, it's not a case that we've miscalculated it so we're not looking for logic error in the code here we're actually looking to try and find out where did this bad data come from so if I do locals again it's nice and easy I can see i is 20 so I can set a watch point um, what that's doing is setting a data watch point on that entry in our array, in, in our data structure. Um, and now the reverse continue. This is going to this is going to run backwards until we hit that watch point. So we're going to find out when was that value last modified. And we now come back here. Um, if I print hash. I again, we can see it was 255 and 11. Just step forward and next. Print cache, so 255 and 0. I can do reverse next as well a couple of times. And we can see that previously it was 132 and 11. So it had good data in it previously, but at this point we're adding bad data to it. So let's have a look at locals again. 
that should hopefully show us the square root value. Well, that's definitely not zero. That's a very big negative number. So something's gone on there. Um, we can see that that value came from line 28. So I can do rev next again. We'll go back up a little bit um, and see there. But really, what we see at line 28 is that we're taking the float value of n. Uh, we're working out what the square root is. We're casting it to an integer and then storing it. So um, we maybe want to look at what the args are. And we can see that n is minus 1. So what's happened, and if we'd have looked, we saw 255. Because this is a u into 8, when you cast a minus 1 to a u into 8, you get 255. So both values in our data structure are actually not the ones that were, strictly speaking, calculated at this point. Um, technically, the square root, I'm sure, would have returned the, the not a number floating point value. But then when it gets cast to an int, it has to go to something. And so we get that sort of max negative value. Um, so we can see where we are here. But... Maybe we want to try and see, well, how did this happen? So if I do a backtrace, I can see, you know, where this came from. I can even do a reverse step out. And this is going to go back to before the update cache funk was called. And here we can see where at the point where it's called. Um, although if I do locals here, we actually don't have locals because we've sort of popped up the stack, but we're not actually in the right thread context. So if I do GRS, you can see we're in the go routine here that was actually executing the update cache. The backtrace knows where it came from, but it's not actually unwound us. And we can see that 2, 3, 4, and 5 are basically parked. So it's go routine 1 that is the one um, that we uh, probably want to look at. Um, so probably the easiest way to go back to see, you know, where were we when we hit that is let's put a break on line 48. Um, we can see that that's looping and line 48 is called multiple times. So let's put, make that a conditional breakpoint uh, that number 2 equals equals minus 1. So we're saying we've set a breakpoint and we only want it to stop when it's minus 1. And if I do the reverse continue now, um, I can run backwards and I will find myself now at the point. It looks like we're at the same line, but if I do GRS, you can see we're actually in go routine 1. At the point where we called it so i can have a look at the locals and we can indeed see that number two is minus one at this point if i do args i can see that what's happened is the number is zero so um if i list uh what's the fuck routine at the moment um we're in cache calculate So, yeah, got that. So it's being passed at the number of zero, which is perfectly legitimate. Um, continue a bit more for the code. Um, and we can see, you know, we, we, we were called with um, number zero. We looked for the square root of zero. We didn't find it in our cache. So uh, we decided to populate the cache with a couple of extra Go routines to put, put source some adjacent values. And what we didn't do is any range checking around line 46 for to make sure we weren't doing negative values. 